Back 930 seals the deal for Hideki at Riviera. He had a few injuries in the last year. Is Hideki Matsuyama back? Let's break his swing down. Hideki Matsuyama is back in the winner circle the first time since 2022. I know he's been dealing with some back injuries of recent and most notably he is the king of the pause. So historically he's had a little bit of a pause move at the top of his swing. I think that works great for some players. Myself, I implemented a pause at one point in my uh, swing journey and it really helped me get awareness of how not to pull on the shaft. So I, I, I took some things from Hideki's swing and, and it really helped me out. I think if we look at this setup, we see a lot of commonalities from Hideki to the last four out of five PJ Tour winners. Now I did not get a chance to do Nick Taylor's swing last week, but one of the things that we've pretty much seen from all these players is their lead elbow is pointed at the target, okay? Which is something I prefer to see, so that elbow points at the target. And then he really has that right elbow tucked back at that right rib cage. So uh, out of all the guys we've looked at so far, I would say he definitely has the most with that right elbow. So in terms of it being externally rotated. Grip, following the trend of weak left-hand grips. Okay, so you can see that logo on his glove points at the target. I would definitely classify that as a weak left-hand grip. And then the V points up inside his right shoulder. So I would say overall, it's a pretty weak attachment. Now, that's always interesting, right? Because when I coach these elbow alignments into players, a lot of times they get worried their grip is going to get too strong. So you can see that Hideki does a great job of managing that grip from getting too far on the stronger side of the spectrum. So I, I like that a lot. Really wide base, okay, much like Wyndham Clark. Difference that we're seeing with his setup is he doesn't have as much foot flare, okay? So I would say his feet are a little bit more neutral. And remember, the camera is not exactly square here. I think if the camera was perfectly square, I think his trail foot or right foot would look even straighter. So it looked like it'd have less flare. That reminds me of a Brooks Kepka setup. So someone who sets up wider base, uh, feet a little bit more square. And typically what we see from players like that is they have a little bit more lateral motion built into to their swing. So obviously it's not a bad thing. It's just got to match up. Down in line view, I think is pretty good. Okay, so we draw a line from the balls of the feet up, runs along his knees, and then that hits right under his armpits, so he's nice and balanced. He has space between his hands and his pelvis, really important for rotation. And then you guys know I love to check the humerus. So if I draw a line down, shoulder to elbow, you can see his uh, humerus hangs on this side of that 90 degree line. When we look at uh, his pelvis and his spine, obviously he's got a vest on, so it's, it's hard to, to look at it exactly perfect, but maybe just a little arch in there. Okay, so maybe just the little arch in that lower part of his back. It's not bad. If I draw a line from the tailbone up, you could kind of see uh, there's a little daylight in there. And especially anytime we start to hear about back issues, I think you always want to look at the setup position. And, and don't get me wrong, players know how to get in and out of positions and move from, from different places. But TPI talks about, you know, one of the easiest ways to alleviate back pain is to make sure that your pelvis is in the right condition at address. So I think that's a good kind of baseline to work off of. All right, so we, we have some lines up on his pelvis and his head to get an idea of how he's moving. First of all, starting with the face on view, one of the things we see is he has a lot of, as we mentioned, lateral motion into his takeaway, okay? So he, he moves laterally much more than Wyndham Clark. I do like how wide his takeaway is. So nice one piece takeaway, he goes up, you can see he's maintaining a lot of width. And then as we get to the top of the swing, one of the thing that you start to see is you start to see not a lot of rotation in his pelvis, okay? So you, if we look at his pelvis, there's not much rotation. It even looks like that right leg is holding a little bit of flex at the top of his swing. So when we see that happen, the upper body will typically start to run out of range of motion. 
And because of that, we now see the upper body extend ever so slightly. So not saying that's the issue of his back pain, but um, I would say that is definitely going to put more stress on his spine than not. Also notice that he pretty much just goes down in the backswing. Okay, so remember with Wyndham Clark, Wyndham went up before he went down. Because he went up, it allowed his trail leg to extend a little bit, which helps the pelvis rotate. And we aren't seeing as much of that from Hideki. Rolling the down the line view, okay, focusing in on that right leg, one of the things you'll see, okay, is he starts with a certain amount of flex, and then it almost appears that he he increases that flex to the top, okay? So it almost looks like he's increasing that flex or even sitting down into that right hip. So we really can't see any daylight between his legs. And typically the byproduct of that when we see that is the hands are gonna start to work more up, okay? So you can kind of see right about P3, those hands start to shoot straight up okay as they start to work up i want you to watch what happens to the club it almost appears that it gets a little bit laid off right through there so you could you could kind of see just a little bit of that head peeking out behind those hands but if i just go slow you can see it's it's definitely moving in the direction of being laid off at the top. So there, there's a correlation in the swing. Anytime the hands work up, the shaft is typically gonna lay back. And then the opposite is true. If the hands are working more around the body, okay, and getting deeper, the shaft will typically work more across. So once again, and, and actually, once he gets to the top of the swing, you can see he, he does create a little bit of light between those legs, but it almost looks more of a result of, of the transition. It looks like he's already kind of sitting into that, which is ultimately what's creating that daylight. So if we go back to dress and we check his grip, obviously we mentioned it is a weaker grip. And what I want to see is I want to see how he managed that into the backswing. Okay. So at P2, uh, checking his face, it's on a little bit of an angle matching his spine angle. Um, that gives us a sign that his face is square to the arc he's swinging back on. We even see a little bit of bow, okay? So you start to see this lead wrist slightly bowed at P2. In my opinion, that's what's helping get that face square. Um, if we move him to the top, his lead wrist is flat, okay? So if you're gonna be a golfer that has a lot of lower body rotation and you do have a weak grip at a dress. We have to make sure that that lead wrist is flat or even slightly bowed like a Dustin Johnson to ensure that the face is going to be visible or square in the downswing, okay? That's really, really important. Going back to this laid off position, okay? So as we mentioned, uh, not a lot of body rotation in the backswing, more lateral, and one of the downsides to that is, is we do see this club get laid off. Now, while we don't like to see that in most cases, is typically that shaft is going to tip out very late, okay? So right around P6, you can see that sweet spot working out ever so slightly, okay? So club is, is pretty much in line, maybe even outside the hands at, at that position. And that is purely the result of that shaft being laid off at the top, okay? So understand how that relationship goes together. Now, obviously Hideki has been the king of the pause, okay? And there was a point in my career where I implemented a Hideki pause. And one of the things that really helped me with was it helped me with understanding how to keep my lead arm up across my chest, okay? So you can see the angles that relationship creates. And by trying to keep my lead arm up across the chest, what it allowed me to do from a sequencing standpoint was it allowed me to understand how to rotate my body and get it out of the way before the arms, okay? We know the downswing starts with the, the lower body rotating. And at the time of my golf career, I had no awareness of how to do that. So implementing this pause taught me how to get that in there. Now, one of the downsides or byproducts of that lead arm staying up across the chest is typically we'll see the wrist angles uh, get thrown out a little bit earlier, okay? So you can see uh, ever so slightly through the transition, 
uh, the radius of the arc is actually getting a little wider very early, okay? So that when we slow him down to P5, he does not have very sharp wrist angles. This is the opposite of a Wyndham Clark, okay? So his wrist angles would have been much more like this. Hideki's are much wider, okay? Uh, downsides of this, not ideal for speed purposes, but it does help get the shaft back into a straight line by impact, okay? So you can see how nicely Hideki aligns that lead shaft at impact. It's, it's a way to square the face up. In the process of doing that, he has a really good impact position. Lower body is open, bent right elbow. You know I like to see that. And then obviously we see a little bit of bend in the spine, okay? Right lateral bend, so also something I like to see. Now, if we go back to the top of the swing, obviously we mentioned Hideki has more lateral motion in there. Uh, very late in his backswing, he's gonna create a lateral push away from the target, which is gonna help recenter his pelvis and get him back to his lead side. If we draw a line down from his lead hip to his lead heel, one of the things you'll see is you'll see a lot of rotation, okay? So we're not getting much lateral motion. Uh, it's mainly the left hip staying inside the left heel. Now, from all the PJ Tour winners that we've analyzed this year, um, I would say the only one that kind of violated that principle was Matthew Pavon, where he had more lateral built in hit to his motion. But as you can see, pretty much just rotation. And then obviously there's a point where he starts to push off the ground. So I think that's really important to being able to control uh, where the hands exit. So you can see um, a, a, a pretty stable release paired with an exit of the hands through this uh, left shoulder. Okay, so you can see the, the hands exiting out through there. So that's a nice relationship. Okay, so I would say based off that, uh, he does a great job neutralizing his swing direction. And I would attribute that a lot of that to that early rotation that we saw from the top of the swing, okay? So as he goes up and then creates that lower body rotation, that's gonna give him clearance for the arms to then work around the body. So overall, very excited to see Hideki back in the winner circle. I think uh, there's a lot of things we could learn from his swing. Obviously some differences here, right? A little bit different than Wyndham Clark. I think that's exactly why we are doing this is to, to show and point out how people are having success playing the game different ways.